We did it, Stephanie. We narrowly evaded the spider's ending, and now we're here for the true horror. I want social the engagement. spider's ending. I'd rather have the spider's ending than the social engagement ending. No. Gosh, if I had a few horrors, like, man, one of those is way worse to me than the other. Surprise! You gotta remember Surprise! how to voice a lot of characters now. Happy not really your birthday, bitch. Who invited you? <laughs> Why do the people keep inviting you? As I open the door, a blast of confetti hits my face, along with a loud pop that leaves my ears ringing. Hope you're not PTSD. TJ, not in the face. Sorry. Oh my goodness, TJ. I slowly pull the papery strings of confetti off, my, off from around my ears as the smell of fireworks stings my nose. I'm having a severe reaction to a party popper. <laughs> Where the fuck's Carl? I look behind me and step over to the side a bit, revealing Carl, who's got his arms folded tightly, head dipped. Good thing I didn't answer the door, huh? Happy birthday! Leo bustles in, carrying two bags. Jenna follows, carrying a medium-sized cylindrical cake covered in white frosting. Carl perks up a bit when he sees this, his <laughs> long ears bouncing. Hey, is that red velvet? Yeah, Flynn says it's your favorite. Store made, though. I would have made myself if Leo had warned us in advance. Hey, I just came up with this like two days ago. Flynn engages Carl with some fake punches while Leo sets the bags down on the table before turning to me with his voice low. Uh, just so you know, your, your gift is a horn band. Maybe they bought a gift for you to give Carl. Oh, right. He's talking to me. Yeah. <laughs> I, I took a moment to register what why he was just saying it. <laughs> it's like it's like when it's like when your mom like signs your name on a card or something. Yeah, exactly. I was like, well, we were busy, you know, doing the whole thing. Everyone forgave Flynn fast, which means this happens too much. Yeah, but they, they're so used they, to Flynn doing they this. They imply that it happens Jesus a lot. Christ. The way they talked about it. That's, while it was happening. That makes me so fucking nervous. <laughs> He's a loose cannon cop who doesn't play by the rules. I hate him so much. Uh, I already hate him as I already hate him like as much as Alexios. I, I'm, trying think, I'm trying to think if I hate him as much or more than Alexios. <laughs> okay, so is everything all right with Flynn? I mean. Leo glances over at the lizard, quirk, uh, quirking the corner of his mouth up towards his ear. Yeah, yeah, I think so. It'll take a bit of time for him to settle down, but he already sort of apologized while you were gone. Sort so of. So that's a start, at least. Yeah? I exhale. <laughs> no. Okay. Oh, yeah. I... Carl, where are your plates? Uh, the, uh, the cupboard, the cupboard, second door over. Actually, they're all in my room. <laughs> <laughs> no, his family's rich enough to have a thousand Too plates, many plates, so it never is an his issue. His plates don't go miss, don't, are not missed. Now that Flynn's not shoving him around, Carl's standard awkwardly next to the table, paws fidgeting. So, why are we doing this? It's not until next month. Leo shrugs, frowning. We just wanted to do something, really. I mean... There's not much to do, you know. You have candles anywhere, Carl? D okay, Jenna? Jenna? Not many people just have birthday candles around. Do you want a freaking votive candle? You want me to get, like, a Yankee candle out? Yeah, and, like, I was gonna say, does she mean just cake? candles in general? Like, this is my sea salt Yankee candle? <laughs> like, you get, like, a tea, like, tea lights. Tea lights you might have around your house. Like, you know, I get, like, moms have tea lights around for bullshit, you know? Who? Not many people I know have like a pack of birthday candles. You know what I'm saying? I don't know. Just yeah. Me. What's up, man? Haven't haven't had your morning joint yet. Light up. Flynn snatches up one of He's Carl's horns and wobbles up. his head around. <laughs> light up. Did he say? Oh, did he say light enough? He said lighten up. Oh, I thought, I thought he was saying light Yo, up. Yo, light because, up, bro. Well, because the joint, it makes sense. It does make. I made sense. it make sense. I made Flynn cleverer, clever, cleverier. There we go. You should have said, said light <laughs> really, <and> up. That <laughs> ran out of gas, and that sentence hard. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's some. Uh, While well, something Flynn did to Carl a lot, the taboo of act of grabbing someone's horn almost makes me gasp out loud. <laughs> 
Stop! That'd be so deeply annoying. Just attached to your head and someone's just shaking your head now. Carl shoves Flynn off and smooths his beanie down. Well, I guess I'll have to skip the candles. I don't think we should have brought some, Leo. Yeah. Yeah, Leo. Yeah, Leo. He's not going to have birthday candles at home. This face is earned. You did this. <laughs> <laughs> and this is the worst thing you'll do all game. <laughs> I'm sure. Leo throws his arms out in a shrug. What? Sue me if I thought they'd have everything we'd need in this mansion. No kidding. You know how places you haven't been to since you were little look smaller when you visit as an adult? Not this place. <laughs> TJ's eyes scan the tall ceiling. This place still looks giant. <laughs> sure, Tej. Carl huffs out of breath. Why didn't you guys tell me? I still need to take a shower. Quit being a pussy. You, you always smell like skunk. Now eat some cake. Flynn grabs up the knife while Jenna sets out the plates. The frosting is so thick it practically absorbs the knife. I haven't had a cake for breakfast since, like, your last birthday, Carl. <laughs> <laughs> Carl doesn't say anything, instead sitting at the end of the table, paws in his pockets. You guys sure slept in. Uh, what are you doing all the- what were you doing all night? Truly yeah, just, just, just balls deep. <laughs> <laughs> I wait to see if Carl is going to say anything. When it's clear he isn't, I chime in. Video games mostly, in a movie. Fun. Fun. It's something we could we could have all done together though. Fucking shut up. <laughs> yeah, don't try to butt in on our on our bonding time. Maybe for people who don't have a job to go to the next day, Flynn. You were off today, obviously. You were at ten. Nobody is reading the mood. Except Flynn. Flynn very clearly reads the mood and just indulges in it. Yeah. That's the worst part. That's the worst part of Flynn, is he knows exactly when somebody's uncomfortable, and he's like, all right, let's go. I feed off this. I hate him so much. I don't think that was a personal dig at Carl, but I don't miss the downward flick of his ears. Flynn plops down a thick slice of cake onto... Carl's plate, the inch deep frosting making a splatting sound. That's disgusting. I hate. That is disgusting. Cake. <laughs> I hate cake. I don't and like frosting. I don't like cake that much in general. An inch of frosting? Oh my god. Yeah. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> Why didn't you bring a pie? Did a five year old make this cake? And just, like, lather More it on. frosting. He made it like. like it's this this cake is like when you fuck up the sliders in a character creator to make a horrible monster, but it's a cake. <laughs> it's just like all the wrong the, the, cake, the balance is all wrong. The cake to the frosting ratio is is very incorrect. <laughs> it's, it's, like, the cake's not supposed to swim in it. <laughs> Does this thing jiggle like jello? <laughs> like what you want? Do you want cake with your frosting? <laughs> uh, <laughs> maybe we should just st stick a doobie in there and light it, huh? I have one joke. Quit making fun of him get for how, being a stoner. Guess how many jokes I have. I'm mad they're making fun of him. They make that his one personality trait. Carl's obviously a complicated person. Quit trying to whittle him down to just one trait. I'm sure it makes him self-conscious. Carl, who had perked up at the sight of cake, shrinks back down with a frown. Uh, just a small slice, please. Because I'm a small slice. Ha! <laughs> because he's cut. <laughs> <laughs> Flynn's eyes... <laughs> Stupid. <laughs> Flynn eyes TJ is holding out his plate and positions the knife. Smaller, please. Oh my god, loosen up. You're on vacation. He's an athlete, though. Flynn starts cutting the slice even bigger than Carl's was. <laughs> hey! Flynn. She says it quietly, but the chill in her voice is clear. And so... And so is the fact that things aren't completely okay. Look at the face. That's the first time Flynn's made that face. J Jenna scares him. Jenna apparently. gets. Jenna can do that apparently. This is look at all these expressions. This is a great birthday party. <laughs> Everyone's having so much fun Are at this birthday fun? party. <laughs> Flynn grunts, then cuts the cake again. This time with a slice that's just an inch wide. That good? Yeah, that's fine. Thanks. TJ moves away to sit down, and the warm glow of our little get-together chills, but Leo chips in with a laugh. 
<laughs> make sure Chase gets a real big chunk. He's getting way too skinny. I don't argue, and Flynn slaps down a large slice on my plate. A little notch in the center where he'd tried to cut TJ's. <laughs> I sit in the vacant seat next to Carl, where he's resting a cheek on his paw, methodically shoveling the cake into his maw. Everything okay? Hmm? Oh yeah. Yeah, everything's good. I'm about to ask more, but Flynn points across the table at us. Hey, Leo! Wanna tell me- th tell them about what we saw on the way here? Oh god, no. I look at Leo inquisitively, and even Carl's ears perk up a little- a little bit. What? Leo purses his lips, like he's trying to decide whether or not to tell us. Uh, now might not be the best time. Flynn rolls his eyes. Flynn is never- never cares what time it is for anyone. Yeah. Screw it. You know Janice? The waitress? Yeah, the methed out one at the diner. Come on, Flynn. Well, anyway, we were driving up Main Street toward the field, you know, with rusted barbed wire and stuff. TJ is hiding his face with a paw as he stares down hard at his oh, cake. Oh no! TJ. So something's tone deaf. Uh-huh. Well, when we turned around the bend, we saw Janice. He keeps pausing for effect, and it's getting annoying. <laughs> He's like, uh, huh, 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 interesting story, huh? <laughs> I love that detail. <laughs> Everyone's obviously not in the mood to talk about what this is, so. How did Flynn get worse? <laughs> Oh my fucking god, he's, he's infuriating. You know, there's, there's a route that's just with him, right? Like, we're going to play that route that's just with him. Yes! <laughs> it's the one I've been told to specifically save for last. So that's the finale. Oh no! <laughs> Look forward to that. <laughs> uh, okay, what happened? Well, she was all crouched over, staring at the road, and Leo starts driving up to her. I thought she was having, like, a, a heart attack or something. Yeah, well, as we get closer, we saw that her pants were down. Oh, she was peeing. I recoil a little, not having expected that at all. It's exactly what I expected. I guess I had more time to think about it. What? Yeah, and when we pulled up next to her, she just grinned at us, and then... Flynn snorts out a laugh, covering his face, like he still can't believe what happened. Can we please not talk about this? It just makes me feel awful. What? Well, uh, she, uh, it's unusual to see Flynn at a loss for words. Well, she just started pissing. He hesitated so much I thought it was going to be worse. <laughs> me, 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 yeah. yeah. What? What? Why? I don't know. She just smiled at us and started pissing. Heard it first, then looked down and saw it. Then Leo hit the gas. Flynn sits back. Done with the story. Not exactly looking pleased with himself. <laughs> good, obviously, good, like, good story, Flynn. Either wow. homeless or tweaking out. Like, leave her alone, dude. I yeah. see. I see worse driving home from work every day. <laughs> Speaks to our town a little bit. I'm no. I'm honest. Like seriously. I, I furrow my brow in confusion. Janice, she was one of the most well-adjusted people living in this town. Leo puts out, lets out a cough into the awkward silence. I'm still trying to figure out what exactly happened. Like, maybe we missed something. Either she seemed... Either way, she seemed fine a few days ago. Well, now I have more reason to never go into that diner again. It's not a fucking funny story, Flynn. Eh, eh. And then everybody laughed. And I was that baby. <laughs> I, I I am I am Pagliacci. Ha ha, very funny. Good joke. <laughs> Just a horrible mistelling of the of the entire quote. <laughs> we sit there awkwardly. I notice Carl still staring down at his now empty plate. I still can't figure out why Carl's being so quiet, but I see an opportunity to get him to talk. And change the subject. Hey, didn't we have some weird stuff happen, Carl? Carl looks up at me. Huh? You know, 
the sound we were hearing. Yeah, now tell our cool story. Yeah. Oh, yeah. What kind of sounds? Did you hear me? <laughs> <laughs> like bumping sounds and voices. That sounds creepy. If one's like, I gotta be quieter when I sneak into Chase's house next time. <laughs> <laughs> now let's all sneak. Or, uh, now let's all go down to the. Sorry, Carl's now we'll house. all sit down in the in the crawl space and turn the lights off while he tells the story. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but let's go down there to tell the story. That'd be funny. Let's do a seance. Let's do a seance <laughs> in the crawl space, guys. You want something to do? Let's do that. Yeah, and Carl just charged down there like he wasn't even scared. That seems dangerous. Carl finally gives a little smile. <laughs> Well, having a hard head can make you act crazy sometimes. So, do you find anything? No, we're not sure what it was. I'd watch out. Sounds like you got a pair of hobos banging out in your basement. And then everyone disappeared. They were they were they went out to, they went down to the <laughs> the crawl space to go see. <laughs> As we eat, Jenna leans over and starts pulling out presents from one of the bags. Sorry, Carl. We didn't even have time to wrap these up. It's fine. She pulls out a comic book from TJ, a poster from Leo, and a manga from herself. That's kind of presumptuous. Like another comic book. Jenna <laughs> is like, how do you know his taste in manga? Like, are you sure? You know what number he needs in the, in the serialization? <laughs> like, are you just going to give somebody a manga they've never read before? Because you don't know if they're going <laughs> to like it. It's like how I gave you homework to buy other manga because I bought the, I bought two volumes that were like too deep in the series that you were in. Yeah, yeah, you thought I was on a different one, so you bought me ones that were like ahead, and I was like, I have to go find the one in between. <laughs> At least I didn't buy you one you had. That that is much true. Worse. Thank you. Uh, she pulls out a. Uh, uh, I know you hate these things, but I think you should give it a chance. A manga? You hate manga? <laughs> Way to break my heart. You just turned on Carl so hard. <laughs> I'll take <laughs> I'll take a look at that, whatever. And then this horn band from Chase. She pulls out an orange and black band from the bag. The colors of my school. Carl's former school. That's kinda shitty, guys. Oh. 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 <laughs> Don't buy a shitty gift on my behalf. Yeah, dude. I would step in and be like, actually, <laughs> I did not buy this. He seems to be struggling to find something to say. Thanks. I didn't know people still wore these. Leo suddenly shifts against the counter, realizing that he has to explain my presence. Uh... I, thought, I thought a horn band was going to be what he's already wearing, but I guess it's it's not. Oh, the, the hat thing? Yeah, I thought that'd be a horn band. Yeah, that's no, like a rubber band type of situation. Like a band you'd wear on the actual horn. It's kind of a cute idea. Might be a scrunchy kind of thing too, maybe? If I, if I had horns, I'd put little bedazzles on them. Yeah. Well, uh, they're making a comeback. Uh, we saw a couple of rams and, and then a stag that had like five of them on. Carl glances at me, and I can tell he probably knows I didn't get it for him. <laughs> Mainly because of the university logo. It's a logo too, guys. And oh. also because we made fun of them together a few years ago about how broy they were. <laughs> yeah, he knows that we didn't buy him that. <laughs> I don't know if I should feel embarrassed or not, but my cheeks burn anyway. He's like, he's caught in the hard place where he, he doesn't want to own the gift and also doesn't want to own not having gotten him a gift. <laughs> yeah, but, but Carl knows he didn't get him a gift, but he can't like it openly admit to the group like... And yeah. say he didn't get him that gift because it makes what they did look like he like you don't care about that. But uh, yeah, you kind like honestly you kind of want to take him aside, and be like Carl. They wanted me to distract you. I didn't have time to buy you a gift. I'll buy you a better one later. Sorry, bro. Like sorry, bro. Like <laughs> I'll take care of you. I promised myself to get him something thoughtful the next next time we go into Peyton. Yeah, well, here's mine. It's my middle finger in a box. <laughs> I was gonna say it's like, it's like a box of trash. <laughs> Just trash. Like you can't. Like you pull out all the fucking wrapping paper that pads it out, and there's just nothing else there. <laughs> and you're like, I got you trash. <laughs> Flynn reaches into his pocket and pulls out something small, hidden in his paw. He hands it to Carl, who looks confused for a second before the expression turns to one of interest. Wow. It's a small metal rectangular box with two sharp points jutting out of the top. I lean, in, I lean in for a closer look and realize that those parts are horns, and there's a complex, elegant design of a ram's face etched on the, the front of the box. 
Carl presses a thumb against one of the horns and pushes. The top flicks up and over, and that's when I realize it's a lighter. Oh, that's sick. That's cool. Is it is it normal to have a lighter that's like... I don't know how to feel about that. Why? It's a cool, ornate lighter, but the idea of it being a human face... <laughs> Which is what it is to him. It's like way like it doesn't have it's not a it's not even just a lighter with horns. It's a lighter with a ram's face on it. Which is his face. So I'm just I'm just trying to imagine like a lighter that has a human face on it. I'm like, I don't I don't know how much I love that. Maybe it was like a cartoony face. Slightly weird. Like cute little cheeky face. The important thing is that counterintuitively, because of their unique relationship. Flynn uh, got him the best gift. And it, it, it suits his personal interests. Yeah, because the only one, it's, the, it's the only thing that Carl has liked besides being told called brave earlier. Yeah. Well, I because I I do think Flynn has a has a, the hots for Carl. I think he that's why he <laughs> I think that's why he rises him so hard. But he rises him in like in a way that's hard and constant. But I think a little bit less of a genuine way than he actually rises like TJ. I think his, I think his criticisms of TJ come off as genuine. But when he rises, Carl comes off like a joke, like a, like yeah. an asshole joke, like a jerk joke, like a joke that a dick would tell you. <laughs> but I do think it's like it's a little bit less harsh. For sure. I think there's an undertone of, like, camaraderie that he's trying to convey, even if he fucks it up. Yeah. No, it's a, it's a type of person, and you can tell the difference between when they're doing it maliciously and when they're not doing it maliciously, but the non-malicious version sucks a lot of the time, too. I, I hate being I hate being teased, and I hate being razzed. I have, like, a... I, I didn't grow up with any, like, any older siblings or cousins, so, like, I basically never got teased. I was the oldest. Like, I was chill. And so when people razz me, I, it took me a long time to figure out how to be okay with it. But yeah. even now, like, I can, I'm like, if it goes too far, I'm like, I can tell that there's truth in this. Like, I, <laughs> like, I, I get really angry about it. You're actually it. judging like, me. Like, why are you getting mad at me? And I'm like, because, like, what you're saying is tone deaf and I hate it. Like, <laughs> Saw it when I was over at the reservation. Made me think of you. Aw. They definitely... <laughs> He reaches out and traces a finger along the horns and clicks it back shut. Thanks, Flynn. Yeah. Now you look like a badass when you decide to get blazed. Yeah. Oh, sorry. Fucking TJ. We all jump and look over at TJ who's looking at the floor. His plate gone from the table. Gone from the table. My, some of these might need to be... <laughs> uh, Flynn starts to laugh but catches himself. Don't worry about it. They probably got a hundred of those plates. Let's just start throwing them for fun. <laughs> <laughs> wait, wait for Zoom, Jenna. What if it was like their favorite plate? The, oh, wait. Look. <laughs> uh, boy. Carl, where's your broom? Oh, yeah. I forgot where the broom is. Oh, you're right. <laughs> this is how I go to the crawl space, it. isn't it? They've probably got a hundred of those plates. Carl, where's your broom? That's a great... Oh, great. Ah. Great, uh, great sight there, Keith. Good job. He doesn't say anything, and we look at where Carl had been sitting a few seconds before, but he's gone. And so was another portion of the cake. He just grabbed <laughs> some cake and ran away. What? Huh? Where'd he go? Hey, uh, check between the wall and the fridge. I think that's where I remember seeing it. That's where I used to, my family kept their broom. Yeah. TJ gets down on his knees and starts picking up the larger pieces. I look back at Carl's spot, then up the stairs. Uh, I'll be right back. Bathroom. Did he have a reaction to the... The sound? The, the shatter? Yeah. I'm not sure why the deck... But but him taking a, another piece of cake has m too much, like, thought put into it than him running away. So I don't think he ran away because of the, sh the shatter. I think he saw a moment to disappear because he wanted to. It's, it's like it's with like th more th cake. Th throwing a smoke bomb and He's then like <laughs> slipping out into the night. He's a sweets ninja. I'm not sure why the deck is the first place I look, but it's where I find him. How big is this house? Also, are these photos even of the same house, or is it just like a weird, like amalgam, just this nightmare? I don't understand this porch area very much. It looks like it's under construction to me. I understand that it's supposed to be. Like, it's like a. It's just, just all wood. It's just wood. But, yeah. but, the, but like the, the it looks like there's like cement on that one side. I don't know, I don't really get this very much. Yeah, what is that? Yeah. 
I don't know. Oh, I, okay. I think I get it. It's reflective. Well, look at the reflection on the left. Okay. The the uh, there's like a downhang oh. on the edge of the uh, of the overhang, and so I think that's what we're seeing over there. Is I think that might be open. Yeah. No, there's a railing. It's there's a glass pane that is the ah. railing there. So it is to prevent you from going over the side. And yeah, that in itself I think there's a hill in that direction. Is reflecting the floor. So they have like that kind of really bougie. Um, yeah. Like so there's light. a waist height glass railing and then past that I think is a hill. Yeah. And so the thing you see behind the glass p- railing is just the reflection of the floor before it. It's conveyed very confusingly. I understand this now, but it's, yeah. it's weird to look at. I think if you put all these photos together and try to compare them, you end up with like six different houses like like none of the photos are from the same building a frankenstein house yeah i think this game fucks with you and doesn't even try to have spatial continuity i think it's it's also hard to parse out because i've never been to a house this bougie this looks like a uh it's so much like a fancy restaurant or maybe like yeah. a a museum or something like an art museum that has like an outdoor patio area with those i've had something a little it. like this which is when my uh at some point, we visited my grandfather in, like, Texas, and it was the only time I ever went to that particular house, but he had moved into, like, the middle of the woods, and, like, they just had this fucking huge house nowhere. Like, it was just, Amazing. like, cheap land or something, I don't know, but, like, it was, it was absurd, and then, and they just moved again, they just keep, they just keep, they just kept moving, but, uh, I guess if you're in a nowhere enough place, you can get, get a lot more done, and you just have to get really used to being alone there now. Easy. I watch him through the paneled curtains for a moment. He's sitting on a little swing set, facing towards the glaringly bright desert. There's an empty plate with a fork on it next to him. He already ate the whole cake? Wow. <laughs> Look at him go. He's also toying with the lighter Flynn gave him, flipping it open and closing it a few times and holding it up to the light. Smoke wafts up from his lap, where I assume he's holding a joint. He was really fast. Yeah, no, he's, these are practice movements. Yeah, the, the glass broke. People looked for a broom. He was gone. <laughs> he already had a joint rolled and the lighter and was outside. Yeah. And he's already smoking it by the time he even goes upstairs. Quietly, I slide open the glass door and step out onto the wooden balcony. The deck is, of course, nice and big, stretching around half the house. I see Carl's long ears twitch at the sound, and he lowers the lighter down into his lap, but doesn't turn around. Hey. He does turn around then, and smiles. He did not want that us to be someone else. Shit. I thought you were Leo or something. Would that have been a bad thing? I look around then, uh, just... I look around, then just decide to sit next to him on the swing. He'd, he'd, sorry, he just had pulled me back to the party. I look over at him. He's looking down at his lighter, turning it over in his paws, the hoof portions of his fingers making clacking sounds against the metal. That's what I thought. He really does have, like... Claws, like, basically. It's, uh, I think it's, like, the last digit of each finger is, like, a fingernail Which all the way around, essentially. a claw, like... But, like, the whole thing, though, like, it's, like... All the way around, it's like he's got, like, doll fingers, but only the last digit. <laughs> I don't like that. It's, he's, like, w- almost like wooden fingertips. It's a very strange detail of how people draw Rams and other and other similar characters as their characters. That not, it's like, you don't want to think about it too much, because it's a little body horror. Those things always fascinate me. It seemed like it should make holding things more difficult, but he managed just fine. See, they're commenting on it. So I feel like girls with long nails, I don't get that yeah. one. Yeah. Are you okay? Carl huffs out a chuckle and leans his head back against the cushioned backing of the seat. That's a great question. Everyone's always asking me. Uh, you just seemed really uptight is all. Carl's demeanor is a lot more relaxed now, obviously. As if to emphasize that, he takes another hit off his joint and holds his breath for a moment, then lets it out. The pungent smell envelops me. I just don't like being around so many people. You know that. Well, yeah, but you were fine around them these past few days. Carl rubs his forehead with the paw, holding the joint, using his palm. Yeah, well, things weren't about me then. 
Just felt a little bit put on the spot. He coughs. That shit just gets me nervous. Like, can't we just hang out and not make make it about me? I don't say anything. Annoyed again that I just can't grasp what he means. I totally get what he means. Yeah, I know exactly what he means. <laughs> yeah, it's <dude>. weird. <clears throat> it's like an event about him. Am I making you nervous? Carl finally looks. Does, Carl, blah, 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 blah. Carl finally does look at me. Then his massive horns swaying towards me. No, you never do, Chase. I do look away at that point, almost feeling self-conscious at the way he opened up to me. And thanks for trying to get me to talk earlier. This makes me feel guilty, though. The way people try and include me in things, and I just disappoint them. <laughs> <Ouch>. <laughs> the awareness of what was happening. Uh, Relatable. <laughs> but you just don't really force me into shit. Everyone feels like I need to do something. Why can't I just decide that for myself? I push against the ground, making the swing sway a little, trying to think of the right thing to say. I mean, it's good to do stuff, right? You can't just sit around doing nothing forever. I guess. It's just that I worry enough about it myself. I don't need other people doing it for me. I lean back in the swing for a bit, looking out over the desert. Man, I'm hungry. Wish I brought more cake with me. Not enough incentive to go back in? Not yet. I could go get you some. He smirks at me. You one of those fat fetishists just feeding me garbage so my moves get bigger? <laughs> Feeder. Oh my goodness. <laughs> so, someone out there in the audience is like, yes. <laughs> it's a genre. It is. You don't have moves. I've felt them. <laughs> yeah, I can't keep your paws off me. You have a thing for my fat ass? I look him over <laughs> as if studying his figure, and then I study his figure. Hmm. Hey! He covers his chest. Well, I do actually like bigger guys. There's nothing wrong with extra weight, especially if it's carried well. He looks at me expectantly. Which you do. Sweet. You know, you seem like you'd be a pretty dope boyfriend. Just give me cake all day and get off on the results. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh boy. I'm about to shoot back at something snarky when a stumbling figure catches my eye. Oop. Music always goes away for good reasons. Out of uh -oh. the sun-baked asphalt of the, of the road in front of Carl's house, I see a thin figure, a weasel, I think, running up the road. He stops, panting, Pause on his knees before he looks over his shoulder again. His whole body slumps then, like the air has gone out of him, like he's giving up on something. He turns around to look back up the road. He's far away, but even from here I can tell that he's talking. Carl looks over at my silence, then down at the road where I'm looking. Hmm? Is that... Is that Duke? Yeah, that's him. Must be on something. He usually is. Duke finally turns around and starts to cower, his paws up in surrender. His lips are still moving, rapidly, reminding me of someone who's trying to say as much as they can before something cuts them off. What do you think? I trail off as Duke suddenly whips his head around to look, at, to look up at us, then starts pointing up at our balcony. I read they're uh on a balcony. He has a swing on a balcony. That's nice. I was like, that's like a resort hotel level. The mo like the moment the swing was mentioned, I was like, oh, I misinterpreted where we were. I'm like, no, there's a swing on a balcony. <laughs> yeah, that's cool, man. What if I, if I had a balcony with a ceiling like that, I would put a swing there too. <laughs> uh oh, let's hope the doors are locked. <laughs> He's coming. He just li he just they lived at us. Honestly, th that would actually be very scary to be in a house. Like in the middle of nowhere, and just see a lone figure just points at you. running up to your house like crazy, alone, and then pointing up at you. That actually pre that probably mm -hmm. almost freaked me out a little bit. You're gonna get hushed. <laughs> that movie was. Uh, <laughs> it's not a very good movie. <laughs> no, it's not. It was really it, fun to watch with it's friends. Got a, it's though. got a really good first five minutes. It was fun to watch with friends because all we did the whole time was talk about all the things she could do. <laughs> she just but, she, but she did not. She do. did not want to survive that movie. It was amazing. 
Carl's uh, chuckling, obviously finding the whole thing hilarious, but I'm a bit more on, ed on edge. I don't really feel like he's high. Duke's movements are a bit more focused, more precise, like he's all there. And for some reason, I feel like he's looking directly at me. I furrow my brow, watching as the weasel turns towards us, sticking a foot out to take a step. The sound, of, the sound of the sliding glass door wrenching open nearly makes me jump out of my skin. They're gonna look, they're gonna look back and he's gonna be gone. Oh, yeah. <laughs> what the hell are you guys doing? Jenna marches around the swing set to stand in front of us, paws on her hips. Whoa. What's up, Jenna? Carlene's back on the swing, elbows over the back, smiling. The fox's eyes narrow as she sees the joint. Did you forget who this party was for? Jenna, no. Yeah, Carl shrugs and, and rubs, her, rubs his forehead again. Leo, I'm guessing? No, we spent all day yesterday getting this ready for you. Leo especially. Now get back downstairs and have your party. So yes, it's for Leo. Yeah. <laughs> Carl sits quietly for a moment, then glances at me. No. No, I don't think I will. He's not smiling anymore. His face... Music? <laughs> okay. Battle time. His face expressionless. Head turned back towards Jenna, but his eyes are wandering off towards the side, looking at the sky. Why not? Because I didn't fucking ask for it. I pretend to look at my phone. What? A party? I'm so sorry we were trying to be thoughtful, Carl. Maybe we should just forget you next time, huh? Jenna, it's okay. We're just hanging out. She ignores me. It's like fuck. It's almost like it's like industrial. <laughs> it's not the music I expect right now. It kind of reminds me of the Lisa music a little bit. Yeah, like I'm like at a midpoint between some of the stuff that happens in Lisa and, and what happens in Silent Hill, <laughs> in the rest of dimension. I see the skin inside Carl's ears and around his nose turning red. Since he was a kid, Carl didn't deal well with conflict usually running away at the first chance he got. No, this is for Leo. I just don't understand why we couldn't do something that didn't involve... Running away when he was... Running away from conflict when he was younger? It's like how we, that's how we met oh, him. Is, oh, yeah, because he literally... How, our he first left us there. He ran away during, during, uh, during that, Route 65. That, that party, yeah. Sorry, Carl, but that's life. Sometimes you have to come out of your room. Sometimes you have to be the center of attention, and sometimes, God forbid, you have to talk to people. Well, what if I just want to stay up here and hide? Who gives a fuck? The look on Jenna's face is approaching contempt. Are you kidding me? This is difficult for you? Jenna. Again, she ignores me. I might as well be talking to a statue, or maybe I'm the statue that she isn't paying attention to. I feel like something must have happened downstairs. This isn't like her. You never realize how good you have it, Carl. If you even had a taste of what I went through. I can practically he uh, feel the heat radiating off, radiating off of Carl's body. He looks down at his lap. I totally... Oh, man, I... I what is happening right now? Jenna, Jenna grew up in immense poverty. Dude, she probably resent or Yeah. She probably resents Carl a lot for having all this stuff and not being able to be happy. She probably thinks the reason she isn't able to be happy is because she didn't have a good childhood. Yeah. Meanwhile, she thinks Carl's childhood is probably great, and he is, still isn't happy, and it probably frustrates her to not understand why that's the case. But at the same that time... That happens with a lot of people. At the same time, though, she, right now, she feels like... The, she feels like a nightmare person. Like, you know what I mean? Like, when you have... Those vi like in media a lot. There's like the nightmare visions of the people of where the people say what you think that they th that they think about you. Yeah, yeah. Like she, it feels she feels like a like a phantom right now or something. Like something's weird with her behavior. Perhaps I, I think I think I, I think it's genuine. But but I this is brutal if it's genuine because this friend group's fucked. They're well, a wreck. I, 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 to be completely honest, I, their whole friend group. I'm not. It's one of those things where it's like, and I've I, like I don't. I don't know how many people have also experienced this, but there's like a certain... You have like a friend group, and you you maybe like some of them, and then maybe other people are added. And after a while, you kind of aren't... 
meshing all that well, but you're still obligated to do things for each other, like birthdays and events and things. Because it's like a, it's like like a weird group of people where people where everyone's only friends with like one or two of the other people. Yeah. And the and the friend group's like too old, so they have all this old shit to dick up all the time. And then they all have shared trauma. Hooray! Yeah, I, I feel like this definitely is something where it's like, yeah. we just have no one else, so we are together because we have no one else. And we yeah. don't necessarily like each other, but we have no one else. It's like a family. We have no one else. And Carl, Carl is the, the later addition that you would resent. Because it was originally uh, Chase, Leo, and Jenna. Even though apparently he fucking knew Carl when he was eight, so not that recent of an addition. <laughs> But it was like, it's a separate friendship that he probably mostly developed individually with Chase. But then Chase he tries to mesh with, with her. All these people. Yeah. And that doesn't work. Are you blaming me for that? His voice breaks. We, we, all, we all have our problems. Some easier than others. Carl glares at her, trying to be angry. But I can tell it's not working. You don't know what kind of shit I have to deal with. Like, being rich? No, it, it, it's like myself. Oh, how terrible. The one thing you have full control over. That's not how that works. No, you... <laughs> me have full control over myself? <laughs> <laughs> no, no, that's so fucking unfair. The quiver in Carl's voice doesn't exactly sound convincing. And the pot doesn't seem to be helping, as I can see his fingers shaking. Just like life. Carl's face is bewildered. What the fuck did I do, Jenna? Did I say something wrong earlier? Out of habit, he lifts the joint to his muzzle with his shaking fingers, but then flinches as Jenna steps forward. I guess he thought she was going to slap him or something, but instead she just reaches forward and plucks the joint out of his grasp. Right before flicking it back into his face. Oh. That's not what I thought that was going to be. Also, she's very effectively distracting us from Duke. <laughs> Jenna, I think what you should do is step forward and grab the joint and then just take a puff out of that. And just sit down for a minute. Okay, girlfriend? Yeah. It hits his nose and Carl flinches again. Without a word, Jenna spins on her heel and opens the door even harder than she did the first time. I'm stunned. I haven't seen Jenna that angry since she was in middle school, and definitely never at Carl. Carl doesn't say anything, instead rubbing at his nose, leaning back in the seat. The insides of his ears are still flushed to deep red. What the fuck was that? I... don't know. Something must have happened, that wasn't Jenna. I'll ask Leo about it... later. I, I didn't do anything, did I? I shrug. No words coming to mind. In the, in the grand scheme of things, Carl definitely did not do anything wrong. He didn't ask for this to happen. And yeah. him feeling uncomfortable is definitely something that, like... But I also... It's not really his fault. But I also, I also understand trying to do something nice for a person and then having them seem like they're blowing you off over it and feeling frustrated over that. Yeah. Like, I understand both sides of this in the sense that he comes off like... He just, like, doesn't care and is being negligent to them and the fact that they care about him. Yeah. And, like, they're trying to do something nice and he's just, like, ignoring them. I, I, like, I understand, like, why that would come off, like, you're being a dick. But also, you have to understand, like, you shut up at his house, guys. Yeah. You shut up at his house, unannounced, and just expected to, to do a thing that he didn't consent to. Like, that... You have to understand that part, too. I definitely relate. Like, I've just, like... I have hidden in my share of bathrooms <laughs> and just disappeared for a while from things... <laughs> Yes. Like, absolutely. We sit in silence for a while, listening to the train horns and the ferret scratching at the wall. Yeah, yeah. you want to look back down at the ferret really quick? Cause I'm wondering what happened to him. <laughs> looking down, I, I see the joint still smoking up from the planks on the floor. Slowly, I lean over and pick it up before holding it out to Carl. He takes it and looks at it for a second. You can actually hear the train. You know, that was happening earlier, and actually... It kind of threw me off because I used to live next to the Ace Train yeah. tracks, and so you thought it was real. Well, yeah, I did actually, but also like really reminded me because I was so normal. It would come by like every few hours, like even at night. Yeah, and so it got to the point where it was just always in the background of my life for like a solid like decade. It's like you register its absence more than its presence. 
Well, it's, it's just it came off so so comfortable and normal when it started happening. <laughs> and I noticed it, and I was like, "Oh, the train, the, tra- the, the train's going by." And I'm like, "We don't." I'm like, "Wait, we don't live next to a train." Like, <laughs> it's the ghost train. Uh, it's from your past. It is. Raising his paw, he pauses, then takes a drag before flicking it off the side of the balcony, starting an immense fire. <laughs> yeah, you guys. I don't know if this. It's, it's pretty hot where you guys live. Yeah, you don't want to. You don't want to throw is lit. It? You don't want to throw lit things around in the Southwest. <laughs> Yes, yeah, it's kind of California-y, so you don't want... Yeah. We have enough fires as it is, guys. Be careful, please. He lets his head sag, his big horns dipping towards the floor as he closes his eyes. Slowly, I pull my arm around his shoulders. Oh, yeah, people have updated me in that, like, I, I think I mentioned it, but people have said that this might be somewhere else? But it's definitely in the southwest somewhere. It might not be in California, but it's, like, near here, in this corner of the country. Yeah, because I think we figured that out last time because I, 65 was kind of through-ish California, but it goes all the way down. And then the the freeway they mentioned in this game goes literally across the entire U.S. from California all the way almost to the other side. Yeah. So it could be like the data you The data you found looked like Southern California, but also like I don't know if some of those names repeat locally or not or what. Well, they just gave us freeways. Yeah, and it also could just be a lie. (laughs) That is true. (laughs) That is true. Slowly, I put my arm around his shoulders. He leans into me and doesn't pull away. What the fuck, Jenna? Jenna was having a moment. Jenna was having a moment. Mm. 